how lucky do you feel? We all have a schedule to maintain. If the people supporting us pull out, we all go hungry. I feel that we've got to the bottom of this case. The man that tried to knife me, uh, his fingerprints were on the knife. And uh, three months ago when your business partner was killed, well, uh, even though that this man wiped the knife of the blood. It matches up to the blood of your business partner. I feel we got to the bottom of this case. I feel that we've got closure. Sure, my heart bleeds for all those people that have passed on. But in a business, you don't quit when things don't go the way you want them to. Look, I got a flight to catch. Look, I wish you the very best. I've been cleared of that airport shoot. I'll be taking a flight to North Carolina tomorrow. I realize um, you like uh, your little sexual fantasies. But uh, while I'm gone, uh, you need to be uh, more precautious. You need to stay away from that window. Mr. Williams, pleased to meet you, sir. Please have a seat. Well, yes, I got uh, your letter. Uh, yes, sir. What can I help you with? Well, I am soon to be remarried, okay? My first wife died. There is now suspicion of all things of me having murdered her. All right, that's not, it's not the case, it didn't happen. All right, my fiance is aware of this suspicion now. I'm, I've called you, sir, to help clear my name. I've read about your works here in the papers, okay, on those other two cases, all right, outstanding job. I said, if anybody can help me, it is you, sir. That, sir, is why you're here today. Are you sure that I can help? You are the man, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I'll do what I can. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Look, uh, when can we get together? I'm on your schedule, sir. You let, please call me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Uh, you know, Mr. Meadows, what I need to help me solve this case is, you know, your, your wife. Hmm. You know, when you married her, uh, could you tell me the difference in her personality? Sweetest thing ever, man. I tell you what, uh, from, from our dating time to after we got married, uh, of course, uh, business picked up for me. I was away from home a little bit more often, and she was spending more money. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> so I had to work longer hours and be away a little bit more. But uh, other than that, when I'd come home, she was here for me, and, and I was here for her. You know, it, uh, like I said, I to, she started spending more money. I was making more money. Had to make more money. And I uh, was gone more often. So we didn't see as much of each other as I would have liked to. Right. Oh. What I want to know is, in other words, uh, the relationship up until our death was as good as it was when we first got married. Yes, it was. Just wasn't as, as much time together. Well, business, yeah, right. you know, it's business. And, right. you know. Well, that, that's all I need to know for now. Thank you very much, Mr. Meadows. Yes, sir, Inspector. Mr. Meadows. Yes, sir. You know, this reminds me of a cabin where I met my wife. You know, you got a nice little place here. Yes, sir. Yeah, we had it built about 10 years ago. Well, you know, just like I served in the military for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, well, I met this one of my dreams. I thought it was a little late for marriage and whatever. And we really had a good relationship, some of the happiest years of my life, and then she got sick with a terminal illness, and then she mm. died. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, well, I've met this young woman now, because she's a real shy and bashful person. Mm -hmm. Shy and bashful. But she likes to live in the make-believe world. She likes to pretend she's a stripper. Mm. And I'm told her to stay with her, uh, out on the street, so she's a shy and bashful person, but she likes to get in front of the window. And what I'm saying is, what happened to your wife, I'm afraid might happen to her. I'm just uh, expect to be, get a phone call any time. You know, it really bothers me. Yeah.
Sheriff Winslow, do you think law enforcement is improving? Well, I think the, uh, I hope, I think the law enforcement is going to get better around, especially uh, this uh, cold case thing that we're digging up. Uh, that should help the law enforcement really good. Uh, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to dig up these cold case files and, and bring them to justice. I know a lot of them, a lot of them go on uh, 10, 15, 20 years and you find them, you find them. Well, I hope law enforcement uh, has improved because <laughs> you don't know what it's like to have to wait 10, 15 years in order to get your name cleared. I just want my wife's killer call. Well, they never, nothing ever comes of any of them. They just sort of get forgot about. Uh, but I think more and more of them's coming up in there. It's a challenge now, and, and law enforcement is really eager and willing to do something about it. And, uh, we got better ways of. You got better ways of proving stuff. Well, I'm, I'm just hoping that uh, law enforcement has improved since then. And uh, I just want to get to the bottom of this because you don't know what it's like to be suspected of your wife's murder. And I don't have, I don't want to have to wait 10, 15 years in order to have my name clear to this. I've hired a private investigator to look into this case as well. And, uh, but if your department comes up with any new information, please keep me informed. Well, what have uh, you got for me today? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Meadows, uh, I'm here for you. Now, uh, I've asked you question after question about your wife, but I've got to have everything in detail, over and over. When I question these people in the places that you've been, Mr. Meadows, uh, I know it's in the report, but can you tell me? I mean, I've got to hear from you. How was your wife dressed the last time that you seen her? <laughs> well, that's easy. Uh, we'd gone to a little small cafe. Uh, she was dressed quite elegantly. Uh, she had on a nice long black evening gown, her fur, her fur coats, her diamond earrings. She had her hair up in a, in a bun, and she was wearing her uh, black high heel shoes. I know it's been some time, but I need to know now, are you sure that's the way she was dressed? Yes, sir, Mr. Williams. That's exactly how she was dressed. Yes. I'm questioning people, you know, at the cafe, and, you know, you hear loose talk at the bars, and, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll do, you know, well, what I can. And All right. It just takes time. Uh, most time, people just give themselves away. You like when sto one story don't match up with the other, I mean, a lot of times people just give themselves away. Uh -huh. And uh, uh -huh. when somebody tells me one story in one week and another one the next, you know, they could be suspects. So, you know, things looking good on your behalf. I appreciate hearing that, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Well, yes, look, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I know you're busy, so I know you got the... Earn a living. Yes, sir. As I'll be trying to earn mine. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, see you next time. Thank you. I missed you at that church homecoming. You must have another social activity. Well, how are you? Oh, I'm doing all right today. I see you got that dog on a short chain today. Yeah. He's been he's been kind of bothering people today. That pity bone will be shorter chain. You must be us cut. Yeah, but I kind of figured that that you had a lot of stuff to talk to me about. 
I've uh, been over in Thailand training in self-defense. They got some good instructors over there. I need your help. That's good. That's good. I think the old dog kind of misses him. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know what... Help me work the streets. Help me get the information I need. citizenship and uh, they start these gangs and uh, especially the Chinese they got some rough ones because they do this karate do this karate stuff and and it looks important to these people and they, and they get into the gangs with them because they like that karate look and uh, they feel like you know if they can learn that they're you know they're they'll be the greatest so that entices them to join the karate stuff. And they come in and start these little groups. And that's not really good. And I think that has a big impression on the younger people, too. Oh, yeah, that's what the younger people like at karate stuff. I know we got gangs here, but still, uh, that type of culture, it does have a lot of influence on younger people. Yeah, they like that karate stuff. That's what draws them in. And uh, just like I'm saying, I ran into some of it, and I ended up in jail on account. Mm -hmm. to the restaurant the other day. Mm, yes, sir. That's correct. Yeah. Well, That's right. What I'm saying, what type of clothes was she wear? <laughs> Does it really matter what type of clothes? It's very necessary that I have information on your girlfriend. It's very necessary that I have the information on your girlfriend. I mean, what I'm saying is that these people are out of focus in their description of what they are telling me about her appearance, as well as your wife's. They might not be telling the truth. That's why I want to go over, over, and over this situation. Tell me, Mr. Meadows, uh, what type of clothes uh, was your wife to be wearing when she went out for breakfast that morning? Uh, I she was wearing blue jeans, a uh, white blue t-shirt. Yeah. And uh, what type of uh, shoes was she wearing? What type of shoes does it matter? What, 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 what type of shoes does it matter? What, what, 
Why, why, why would that matter what type of shoes she's wearing? Shoes, tennis shoes, I guess. I, I don't know. And what type of socks are with the tennis shoes? Can you tell me that, Mr. Matters? What type of socks? I, I, I couldn't tell you the socks. No. these Chinese people they got their own culture and they come over here and set these neighborhoods up with gang uh, members and uh, I'm just not going to have that kind of thing they uh, they form they form these gangs and, and cause people trouble all the time and uh, I got to get rid of that but they come over here and form these things and they're rough they're rough guys. They they been doing it for years in their country, and they come over here and set them up over here and, and get people to join up with the gangs. And they they don't have any problem getting getting them to join in. Well, my my wife did do a lot of walking in that area. You uh, think that street gang may may be responsible? No, I don't think the Oriental mob was involved in this disappearance, in this disappearance case. Oh, uh, Mr. Matters, I've uh, Rick seen... Williams, come on in. Oh, well, yeah. You're on the back side of the cabin day. Nice view of the lake. Yes, sir. Sure is. We go fishing right down there. That's the spot right down there over there. That's it. So, Spectre, what are the chances are of catching my wife's killer? There's a chance. Glad there's a chance. Well, what I'm saying is, yeah. if the killer's in town, I just failed that through questioning, he's going to give himself away, but uh, if he's out of town, I don't know. Just, I don't know. Any, any major suspect right now? Well, it, it's just like uh, there's a number of people who could be a suspect, but it's too many of them with the same, uh, same stories, you know. It's just going to take more work on my part. Well, I just want to come out and, uh, you know, see if there's anything new on your part. I'm, I'm here. Okay, you know where to find me. Okay. All right. Thanks, sir. What do you got to say for today? Well, you know, today is a beautiful day down here at uh, Charlie's Barn, and, uh, we're going to have another Milo Ho Western film show and gunfights and singing and we, uh, good food to eat. And uh, it's really got a, lot, a little bit of a breeze out here today. We're going to have a great time. Well, it's been good talking with you, James, and I'm really looking forward to the show. I am too, and it's always a pleasure to see you, Ron, and have a good day. I don't know much to say. I'm just a dumb old country boy. One of uh, Rooster's friends here in Milo Ho. Well, it's good. Calvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson. And I want to interview the, uh, the man over the Black Rose Pistol Earl. So, you know, he's, uh, you know, putting on these Western shows. And, uh, well, uh, you know, it's a lot of people are saying that uh, the Western shows are violent. They're bad for younger generation. Yet, uh, I feel that's part of our American heritage. And, uh, I feel that the story needs to be told. What do you think? Well, violence is a man has the right to defend his country and to defend his family. And if he doesn't stand up for what he believes in, he's going to fall for anything, like a famous country singer said. You've got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. But 
Uh, you got to defend your country, your family, your home. We have the right to bear arms. We have the right to be responsible with them, too. But there's always going to be a handful out of a population of this side of the country where there's going to be some nutcases and some bad apples. And all you got to do is take out the pocket knife, cut out the worm, and go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Donnie, uh, it's really been great talking with you. I know you go by the name of Rooster. Uh, I feel you patting that name after the American hero, John Wayne. Yeah. I just feel that uh, John Wayne is a symbol of American patriotism, just as much so as the American flag. He was a great American actor and a very good American. He was very patriotic. And he's... Uh, Roy Rogers has his time and will always be revered and loved, and so will Gene Autry, but John Wayne outlasted them all. He was from the 30s all the way into the 70s till his death, and even 20 years after his death, his movies are still highly rated and highly loved, and the sales on John Wayne movies are still big. And uh, there's a lot of living actors who would like to have uh, you know, the uh, saleability of John Wayne. He's been deceased since 79, and he still sells big. Hey, where's well, uh, the other Black Rose Sister Larry? Well, yeah, uh, uh, Lindsay Shugmate, he's one of the top stunt men in uh, Western shows and movies. And what do you think about the uh, Western shootout today? Do you think it's a good or bad influence on, on the younger generation? I think it's going to be great the way we do it. It'll be good. Bad guy always loses. Mango Kid, played by Jerry Seals, he's participated in gunfights and he's a professional actor and stuntman. Uh, it's good to see you at the Milo show, Jerry. Uh, what do you think about uh, some of the uh, complaints we're getting about the gunfights being a bad influence on the younger generation? I'd like to hear from you. Well, Charles Starrett was my role model. And you can tell by my outfit, you know, that. I do Charles Starrett, which is the Durango Kid. Uh, yes. And along with Jock Mahoney, you know, his double, his double, double. And uh, I, Charles Starrett's my role model, so I didn't turn out so bad. I, went, yeah, I used to go see him when I was a kid, you know. Okay, Mr. Cross, what have you got to say today? Well, I'd like to say, I'd like to add what Jerry said a while ago about these things, these Western movies, and the guy that we portray this day and time set an example for us to be good, because we portray the the good guys like they did back in the early days and they set an example for us because that uh we want to be the good guys but we know it takes the bad guys to make the good guys but we had a good pattern to go by that's why we try to live the life we do today at this day and time we try to set an example for the kids to go straight this is a professional actor and stunt ma'am he's out to participate in our western show today and what have you got to say sammy well i'm just happy everybody's here it's good seeing you ron here at Milo Holtz Old Time Western Film Club in Silo City. It's always a thrill to see everybody and watch the old Western movies of yesterday. Best things even made in Hollywood. And I see you got a friend with you. Now. Yes, this happens to be my grandson right here, John Randall Darren. We call him Randy. It's nice to meet you, Randy. Hopefully one of these days he's going to be one of the future guys that carries these old Western movies on. And do the, the gunfights and the entertaining and who whatever. Well, it's really great. Uh, Y'all make a good pair. Well, thank you very much. And I don't believe I'll talk to this gentleman here. What is your name, sir? Well, I'm Dean Baker from Dallas, North Carolina. And uh, this is the first time I've been here, but I'm a member of the Saddle Pals. I, I'm one of them. Love, I love, know a lot of these guys here. And, uh, Really love the Cowboys. Well, it's really great for you to come out today, and uh, it's really been nice talking with you, and I hope we have a good show. At least I'm I know looking you forward will. to it. I thank you, yeah. Thank you very much, sir. I saw you came out for the Western show today. Right. I'm uh, Larry Edwards, and uh, my character is Bill Cody. Well, that's one of the American heroes. It's really nice to meet you, Larry, and it seemed like you got a partner with you. I'm sure have. My name is Tammy, and I'm, my character is Jane Whip. And the character, what is your character today? The Black Whip. The Black Whip. Well, I think you and Durango Kids going to make a good team. I think so. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really been good uh, talking with you. You too. And I'm really looking forward to a great show. Ken Eckhart's my name. It's nice to meet you, sir, and I'm really looking forward to this Western show we're going to have, and uh, I guess you'll be participating. Yeah, um, I'll be changing into my outfit in a little while. Do the Long Ranger. Well, the Long Ranger is uh, one of the American heroes along with John Wayne, and I think that's going to be a real good influence on the young people here. It's well, we hope it is. Give them a real good role model to look up to. We hope it is. We hope it works out good for them. We've had a lot of positive response from the children that we meet doing this. It's been great talking with you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Your name, sir? T. Shore from Greensboro, North Carolina. Well, it's really been great talking with you, and it's good to see you. I come down here every time I have one of these Westerns. I enjoy them very much. I appreciate all you people. Yeah, it's good to meet new faces, new people all the time. Good, good friendship, good fellowship. Well, it really, that's what makes is people like you. I mean, uh, they're just as part of the team as the people on stage. There you go. We've been doing this a long time, and we practice safety rules. unless you practice all the safety rules and know what you're doing. Imagine a bullet does a heck of a lot more damage. And you don't want to look in the mirror one day. John Eric Hexham in 82 was a TV star. He was killed. He was playing with a gun. He put a cotton wadded blank. They don't use cotton wadding anymore. Put it to his temple, 44 Magnum. Came out the other side, the size of a baseball. They didn't say for several days that he was dead.
each promise broken like my heart. It's a sin, my darling, how I love you. So much in love and yet so far apart. you keeping this western tradition alive it's really been an inspiration to me and i know it's really meant a lot and it means a lot to the younger generations you know they're the future of america and um, what have you got to say what do you think about it well i hope uh, uh, enough for coming along behind me to keep it going after i'm gone a lot of us fellows in the 70s now and some of even in the 80s i hope there's enough fellows coming along to Preserve it for a lot of more years after we've done hit the trail, you know. I hope so too, but I hope you got many more years to go. You look like you're in good health and uh, good Lord willing, we we'll take it day by day. Well, that's, I guess that's the best way. I, Lord willing, I, I guess that's what to expect. Start out today with the Lord and thank Him at the end of the day that you pull through it. Well, that's the way I've always done, and I. Uh, I don't believe he wants us to worry about that much the future. We start looking too far down the road. I had no idea it was 32 years ago. Yeah, more I think. 32 years ago, it'd still be going on. But, uh, Let's say, has it been uh, 32? I mean, I, Actually, I, I started before that, down in my house. I knew it was up in the 30s, and it started off at your house. I've been at it 40 years or more. I, th I thought that you was going, out, going on at 40 overall. As a, as a group like this, getting together, we've been doing this 32 years. Well, I started in my house and uh, accumulated a bunch of films and things, and got me a little trailer then, <clears throat> put it in, and let people come in. And, sit around watching with me and uh, I was been surprised that a lot of people other than myself were interested in Western. Uh, proof here today that uh, every town had its own Western band. Well I tell you right now, you know, the last three times I've been up here you've been getting real good turnouts. So. One time at the school house we had uh, over three hundred people. Well, I just want you know, just to let you know personally, you've really been an inspiration to me. I really look forward to coming up here, and I really appreciate uh, what you've done and what you are doing. And uh, uh, I think uh, how it's going to help young people coming up. I just feel. Go ahead, George, meeting you and everybody else. Right off down through the years, and it's just a I do too. And you look in good health and I thank you very much for this interview. Look, I just want each and every one of you to know that I really enjoyed your show here today and I really appreciate your views on the American Hero. I thank Milo Hope, and I want to thank each and every one of you for working with me, trying to find any information on Jack Lanning. Maybe in time, he might show up. I just hope that it's not foul play, but 
But maybe time. Time might tell. on this case inspector. I, I pretty much have told you everything that uh, I know to tell you. You have read the police reports. Now, uh, I've asked some question after question about your wife. But I've got to have everything in detail over and over. When I question these people in the places that you've been, Inspector Williams, this is the fifth time you've asked me what my wife-to-be was wearing. What has she got to do with this? Well, uh, Mr. Meadows, when you hired me as an investigator, you know that I deal with reactions. Now, reactions can actually mean the difference where a person's telling the truth or not. <laughs> yeah. Inspector Williams, it seems like that you may be trying to implicate me also as the suspect here. Well, I don't really know who the suspect is, but it's just give me uh, grounds to investigate possibly. But be some people at the cafe. I don't know. Uh, everything's got to match up. Descriptions have got to match up. Yeah. Seems like you're getting a right back around to those people in the cafe just to give them something to talk about. The people in the cafe have been doing a lot of talking. And what they tell me is that your wife had been seeing Jack Lannon on a regular basis. Mr. Meadows, uh, I'm here for you. I hired you to clear me! Well, uh, I just go by the evidence, and I want you to be innocent. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that, sir. I am innocent. But, you know, the bad news, it's just not looking all that good for you right now. <laughs> uh, Inspector, are you making me out to be the primary suspect here? Kind of sounds like that. I hired you to clear my name. Well, I'm going to do some more investigating, and we'll see how things come out. All right. Uh, Glad to hear that, sir. And I hope things work out uh, on your side. Uh, on my side? You make it sound like I'm guilty. Like I'm the primary suspect here. Lannon is still alive. I was set up by one of his karate students. I got a call from this person telling me that he had information on this case and when I showed up where well, he tried to knock me off but it did not work. He might gradually just uh, you and him run in together somewhere. And when you do uh, maybe you and him can kind of talk about where he's been and 
maybe uh, you and him, he can show you where he's went to, so we'll know next time when he takes off. Mr. Meadows, uh, Mr. Meadows, uh, Rick Williams. I heard you on the segment today. What about? Yeah, uh, <laughs> you've had more than enough time on this case, and uh, I want my wife's killer caught. And so far, you haven't come up with nothing. Yeah, are you sure? I mean, are you sure you want your wife's killer caught? Did you just bring me in to fail? If that's true, Inspector Williams. You wouldn't be able to prove anything. So far, you haven't been able to prove nothing. Inspector Williams, <laughs> you seem to be making me out to be the primary suspect here. Well, I'm just uh, following the leads. That's, that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I hired you to clear my name. You know, I, I'm getting to believe that you hired me to fail. I think you just want to look good in a friend's wife to be. Uh, you want to clear yourself in front of her. I, I just felt that when you hired me, mm -hmm. you didn't really expect me to solve this case. <laughs> uh, Inspector Williams, I hired you to clear my name. I hired you to clear my name. I'm not guilty. Well, that's what they all say. Uh, I don't want you to be guilty. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Inspector Williams. But uh, I want to get to the truth. Yes, sir. I want you to get to the truth, too. Well, just like I'm saying, I want to get to... Inspector Williams, you seem to be making me out to be the primary suspect here. Inspector, you're making me out to be the primary suspect. Well, Mr. Maddox, uh, you are the prime suspect. Good day. How do you feel about the update on the DNA? The DNA brought everything to, up to date as far as proving a person's guilt. So it's a lot better now with the DNA. If it hadn't been for the DNA, everything was sort of standing still. But the DNA has really, it's really bettered everything. And we've got a lot of people 
out of prisons that wasn't guilty of what they had done and they served 15, 20 years and get out. It's pretty great. I brought this investigator, uh, Inspector Williams, into this case and he doesn't seem to be getting anywhere with this case. <laughs> In fact, he's a uh, it looks like he's trying to make me out to be the primary suspect. Oh, there's a lot of people being sent to prison that wasn't guilty. I think a lot of the, a lot of corruption in uh, in law enforcement through the years that they they had the pressure from from the departments ahead of them and higher up than them, and they had pressure on to to. Uh, find somebody guilty and I think that's the reason a lot of a lot of the uh, people that were sent to prison they wasn't guilty that's the reason they got there is because pressure on the department to, to pin it on somebody so now that the DNA is coming into play uh, that pressure is not there anymore uh, they, they don't uh, they don't feel like they got to get somebody that quick because if they put somebody in there that's not guilty and they find it out later, they got all this money to pay out for these people to spend, to spend time in jail and wasn't guilty, they have to pay them off. And it goes into a, a lot of enforcement's budgets. So, it's a big... Well, that's real encouraging to hear. <laughs> because, uh... It seems like all the evidence is starting to point toward me. Well, how have you been along today? Oh, good. Fine, Inspector Williams. How about yourself? Okay. Okay, good deal. How's the case coming? Well, well it's coming along. Uh, all right. Uh, I mean, what I'm saying, have you and uh, your wife to be uh, I heard y'all went out to the restaurant the other day. Yes, sir. That's correct. Yeah. Well, That's right. What I'm saying, what type of clothes was she wearing? <laughs> Does it really matter what type of clothes she was wearing? Well, you know what puzzles me is yeah. that, uh, so you remember everything in detail about your wife, the way your wife was dressed, and uh, your front, uh, fiance, your uh, wife to be, uh, you take. Uh, Remember that much, you know, it's sketchy. I mean, you know, uh, some day, sometimes you remember certain parts of her clothing, and uh, I don't know, I'm just really confused about this. Okay. <laughs> I don't see what the problem there is. I mean, you seem to be uh, making me out to be the primary suspect here, Inspector. Well, maybe it was just that day, you know, just that day, you know, the last time a certain type of clothes she was wearing. Well, mm. you know, maybe that's what it was. <laughs> Uh, maybe that's what it was. Okay. The voters found the body of the river. Now, I've been looking for Jack Landon, and my knowledge is still alive, but I haven't been able to find him. Now, uh, these remains turn out to be his body. It's going to complicate things because, uh, I have information that Jack was going with his mother's wife. And if it turns out to be his remains, this case is going to be complicated. He's an escaped mental patient from the state of New York. He's been tried and convicted for two murders. And who knows, he may have been involved in a dozen of them. Doctor, uh, what you're telling me is that the bone structure in the teeth matches the identity of Lamar Craven, not Jake Landon. Thank you very much, Doctor.
What can you tell me about these cold case files? What can you tell me about law enforcement? Good or bad? Sheriff Winslow, I got the autopsy report on Lamar Craven. And according to the report, he put up quite a struggle. He was an extremely physical and violent person, yet he ran into somebody tougher. Now, uh, between myself, Officer Dan Bowe, and Jim Benson, we've been working the streets, and we found out quite a bit. Did you know that uh, this uh, Jay Clannon, he goes by a number of names. His first name being Jackson. Jackson, Jake, and Jack. His second name being William. William, Bill, and Will. And uh, that's quite a camouflage within itself. I mean, he don't change his social security, but what I'm saying, that's why it's been hard to track. I didn't know whether you knew that or not. I'm investigating Williams and I'm trying to clear uh, Mr. Charles Mess. I've tried to talk with everybody in the community that knows him and right now this case is just, well it's just not looking all that good. And what it is, I'm counting on you. What can you tell? But the man's out that dangerous. He ain't got the heart to kill a chicken. Those cigarettes gonna kill you if you don't give them up. Well, I told you I like them, and if they kill me, they just kill me. No, I ain't gonna blame the cigarette companies. Well, everybody's trying to get money out of cigarette companies nowadays. Go ahead and light him up. What can, what can you tell me about penicillin chloride? Uh, uh, I didn't have an autopsy done on her body. I didn't want it cut up and dissect it. That was a bad thing. Uh, a lot of people was given that. And uh, a lot of people was innocent that was given that. So the DNA has really kept out all this bad stuff that went on. I'm thinking about having my wife's body dug up. Uh, she, she may have been given arsenic. No, it wouldn't. It didn't show. It won't show up if it's given small doses for a long period of time it won't show up uh, a lot of people's a lot of law enforcement has, has assumed bodies and dug them up and they still couldn't find anything so this inspector williams seems to think that my wife was poisoned uh, but if arsenic doesn't show up what's the point in digging her body up Yes, yes. So, you know, I've checked around and I, I just can't understand why that uh, 
you know your wife was uh, wearing a, a what you say dress clothes, a dress and everything. Right, right. Yet uh, the reports are verified that uh, she was wearing tennis shoes. I, I can't understand. You know, she was a woman of culture from the information right. that I got. Right, right. What difference does it make what type of shoe she was wearing? Well, I don't know. Well, there's got to be some explanation. Uh, I, I have got reports that she liked walking a lot. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, it was a late evening. Uh, we came in the house. Uh, <laughs> I started getting myself ready for bed. All right. Uh, she was on a very strict diet. She had a very strict uh, exercise routine as well. She had to walk so many miles per day within a 24-hour period. Uh, the reason for her wearing tennis shoes was possibly uh, she came home, she just threw on her tennis shoes, and then went out for her daily walk or evening walk. Yeah. What did I find that? That makes sense. Bye, dear. Look, I, I, I got me working the streets, and I'll get back. We get hopefully right. with good news. I, I, please go out, sir, and bring me back some more good news. Thanks, sir. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Okay. And yes, Mr. Meadows, and what is it today? Inspector Williams, you've had more than enough time to help clear my name in this case. You seem to be making me the, out to be the primary suspect here. I heard you to clear my name. It seems that all the evidence is pointing towards you. You're fired! Well, uh, you get your last check in the form of money order. I'll be sure to mail it to you. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Mr. Williams, uh, Inspector Williams, one moment. Come on back. I'm going to write that check for you. And I'm going to give you a little extra. And uh, <laughs> in case you don't know, I do have friends down there at the Sheriff's Office. They are on my, they are on my side on this story. Come on back. They'll clear my name. I can usually tell where a man's telling the truth or not. Spec Williams, you've had more than enough time on this case to clear my name. I love my wife. Yeah. I did. Okay, you seem to be making me have to be the primary suspect here. It just seems that all the evidence is pointing toward you. <laughs> Are you accusing me of murder? I love my wife. What I'm saying might be a day, a week, possibly a month. If he's not telling the truth, his story will vary. Mr. Meadows, uh, I've been questioning people in the cafe, and, and your side of the story checks out. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that, Inspector Williams. But, uh, Mr. Meadows, it, it, it's just one thing I, I can't understand is that, uh, you know, when your wife was found, she was wearing dress clothes, yet tennis shoes. I, I, I can't understand that. Why was she wearing tennis shoes? <laughs> and dressed up real nice. Um, she wasn't wearing high heels. Oh, okay, hold on. I got it. I got it. Um, <laughs> she had a very strict diet and a strict exercise routine. She had to walk so many miles a day within a 24 hour period. Obviously, when we got back home that evening, she didn't have time to change. She put on her and his shoes, and it went for her five mile walk. That's what I'm guessing. That's probably why she was wearing tennis shoes. Thank you, Mr. Mendes. Uh, what did I think of that?
lot of times I can look into a man's eyes. Some don't seem right. I can tell. Sometimes I could be wrong, but I can usually tell when a man's telling me the truth. The bone will be shorter chain. You must be us tough. Yeah, but I kind of figured that, that you had a lot of stuff to talk to me about. Well, uh, what uh, have you found out about Will? Uh, we've kind of found out that he's out of state. That he's over towards your... Tennessee somewhere that he's been uh, gambling, had a big old gambling debt, you know? Yeah. That uh, he was trying to get that off his back. But he just ain't, he ain't come home yet. And, but he said he was kind of going to come home, but it's going to take him a while. Well, you know, one thing that we know he's still alive. Yeah, at least we know he's still alive. I thought maybe somebody might have killed him for sure. But, yeah. You know, he was a physical person. If, they done it fast, lay off. It'd been hard to get by with by the law. Jim, uh, I want to personally thank you for this fine piece of detective work. Now, uh, if you can give me an address anywhere's close, I'll be on my way to Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, I'll, I'll be checking with you. Jack, uh, I feel that you're responsible for the death of Mrs. Charles Meadows. I want you to go back with him and tell what happened. Okay, Jack, we'll do it your way. We'll settle it in the ring. If I didn't know any better, I think you're trying to make her out to be a suspect. Mr. Meadows, uh, your wife was the prime suspect. And you tried to cover it up. You knew that she was a patient at the Blacks in Middle Hospital. Maybe not when her, you married her, you knew it since. And you tried to cover it up to save the publication of your book. Your writer of murder mystery and you're afraid that it would hurt you with your publisher. 
what it is, um, when uh, they found Lamar Craver's body in the river, the boaters found it, and it was analyzed and it was cut up by a knife. Then Jack Barlow's body showed up, cut up by a knife the same way. I done some investigating on your wife, and all three of them were patients in the Lexi Mental Hospital at the same time. They got out. So I feel it had to be some link. Okay, this talk at cafe, I found that Jack Lannan had been going with your wife. Jack Lannan is responsible for the death of your wife. So what it is, they were going together and they had a conflict and she tried that knife trick on him and he took the knife away from her and choked her in the process. It didn't work on Jack because Jack taught self-defense. And right now, Jack's in custody right now and he has came up with the knife. I still don't find that to clear it. And uh, the knife has been analyzed and they found the blood stains of Lamar Craven and John Barlow on it. So that clears you, Mr. Meadows, but what it is, uh, you want to get your book published to the point that you're just playing with the death penalty. I mean, what I'm saying is law enforcement was getting ready to put the cuffs on Because even though you could remember the detail of your wife, the way she was dressed, you couldn't remember uh, the descriptions of other people all that good. But uh, what it is, when it was brought up, that was your wife's favorite dress, and well, that uh, took a lot of, uh, it helped you. And uh, when she went to meet Jack Lannan, she switched from the high heels to the women's sneakers. They got some nice women's sneakers that go with the dress. Come on, have a seat here, Inspector Williams. Yes, sir. Now, right over there, right there's a secret fishing hole right over there. Now, come back here on Friday, we'll catch some. Right. Well, yes, let's go fishing.
I know that Jake Lannon is still alive. I was set up by one of his karate students. I got a call from this person telling me that he had information on this case, and when I showed up, well, he tried to knock me off, but it did not work. He might gradually just, uh, you and him run in together somewhere. And when you do, uh, maybe you and him can kind of talk about where he's been, and maybe, uh, you and him, he can show you where he's went to, so we'll know next time when he takes off. What I'm saying, have you and uh, your wife to be? Uh, I heard y'all went out to the restaurant the other day. Yes, sir, that's correct. Yeah, well, that's right. What I'm saying, what type of clothes was she wearing? <laughs> Does it really matter what type of clothes she was wearing? Well, you know what puzzles me is yeah. that, uh, so you remember everything in detail about your wife, the way your wife was dressed, and uh, your front, uh, fiance, your uh, wife to be, uh, you can't uh, remember that much. You know, it's schizophrenic. I mean, you know, uh, some day, sometimes you remember certain parts of her clothing, and uh, I don't know, I'm just really confused about this. Okay. <laughs> I don't see what the problem there is. I mean, you seem to be uh, making me out to be the primary suspect here, Inspector. Well, maybe it was just that day, you know, just that day, you know, the last time a certain type of clothes she was wearing. Or, mm. Well, maybe that's what it was. <laughs> okay. uh, maybe that's what it was. Okay. The voters found the body of the grip. I've been looking for Jack Landon, and my knowledge is still alive, but I haven't been able to find him. Now, uh, these remains turn out to be his body. It's going to complicate things because uh, I have information that Jack was going with his uh, mother's wife. And if it turns out to be his remains, this case is going to be complicated. He's an escaped mental patient from the state of New York. He's been tried and convicted for two murders. And who knows, he may have been involved in a dozen of them. 
Doctor, uh, what you're telling me is that the bone structure in the teeth matches the identity of Lamar Craven, not Jake Lennon. Thank you very much, Doctor. When she went to meet Jack Lannon, she squeaked from the high heels to the women's sneakers. They got some nice women's sneakers that go with the dress. Hey, out here. Come on, have a seat here, Inspector Williams. Yes, sir. Now, right over there, right, right there's a secret fishing hole right over there. Now, come back here on Friday, we'll catch you. Right. Well, yes, let's go fishing. Painting and who else? Uh, what else? Well, it's really great. Uh, Y'all make a good pair. Well, thank you very much. And I don't believe I've talked to this gentleman here. What is your name, sir? Well, I'm Dean Baker from Dallas, North Carolina. And uh, this is the first time I've been here, but I'm a member of the Saddle Pals. I, I'm one of them. Love, I love, know a lot of these guys here. And uh, really love the Cowboys. Well, it's really great for you to come out today, and uh, it's really been nice talking with you, and I hope we have a good show. At least I'm I know looking you. looking forward to it. I thank you, yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Nice to meet you. I saw you came out for the Western show today. Right. I'm uh, Larry Edwards, and uh, my character is Bill Cody. Well, that's one of the American heroes. It's really nice to meet you, Larry, and it seemed like you got a partner with you. I sure have. My name is Tandy, and I'm, my character is Jane Whip. And the character, what is your character today? The Black Whip. The Black Whip. Well, I think you and Durango Kids going to make a good team. I think. <laughs> yeah, it's really been good uh, talking with you.
You too. And I'm really looking forward to a great show. Oh, Ken Eckhart's my name. It's nice to meet you, sir. And I'm really looking forward to this Western show we're going to have. And uh, I guess you'll be participating. Yeah, um, I'll be changing into my outfit in a little while. Do the Long Ranger. Well, the Long Ranger is uh, one of the American heroes along with John Wayne, and I think that's going to be a real good influence on the young people here. It's well, we hope it is. Give them a real good role model to look up to. We hope it is. We hope it works out good for them. We've had a lot of positive response from the children that we meet doing this. It's been great talking with you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Your name, sir? T. Shore from Greensboro, North Carolina. Well, it's really been great talking with you, and it's good to see you. I come down here every time I have one of these Westerns. I enjoy them very much. I appreciate all you people. Yeah, it's good to meet new faces, new people all the time. Good, good friendship, good fellowship. Well, it really, that's what makes is people like you. I mean, uh, they're just as part of the team as the people on stage. There you go. We've been doing this a long time, and we practice safety rules. Well, that's a full brass blank. What we'll do is we'll certify him. That's a blank at close range. So children, always be aware that guns are a firearm. They use explosives. It is dangerous. Never play with guns. Never pick them up. Tell your parents if you see a gun. They might not be telling the truth. That's why I want to go over, over, and over this situation. Tell me, Mr. Meadows, uh, what type of clothes uh, was your wife to be wearing when she went out for breakfast that morning? Um, she was wearing blue jeans, a uh, light blue t-shirt. Yeah. And uh, what type of uh, shoes was she wearing? What type of shoes does it matter? What, 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 what type of shoes does it matter? What, what? Why, why, why would that matter what type of shoes she's wearing? Shoes, tennis shoes, I guess. I, I don't know. And what type of socks are with the tennis shoes? Can you tell me that, Mr. Meadows? What type of socks? I, I, I couldn't tell you the socks. No. these Chinese people, they got their own culture, and they come over here and set these neighborhoods up with gang uh, members, and uh, I'm just not going to have that kind of thing. They, uh, they, form, they form these gangs and, and cause people trouble all the time, and uh, I've got to get rid of that. But they come over here and form these things, and they're rough. They're rough guys. They they been doing it for years in their country, and they come over here and set them up over here and, and get people to join up with the gangs. And they they don't have any problem getting getting them to join in. Well, my my wife did do a lot of walking in that area. You uh, think that street gang may may be responsible? No, I don't think the Oriental mob was involved in this disappearance, in this disappearance case. Oh, uh, Mr. Madam. Nice to meet you. I saw you came out for the Western show today. Right, I'm uh, Larry Edwards, and uh, my character is Bill Cody. 
Well, that's one of the American heroes. It's real nice to meet you, Larry, and it seemed like you got a partner with you. I sure have. My name is Tammy, and I'm, my character is Jane Whip. And the character, what is your character today? The Black Whip. The Black Whip. Well, I think you and Durango Kid is going to make a good team. <laughs> yeah, it's really been good uh, talking with you. You too. And I'm really looking forward to a great show. Oh, Ken Eckhart's my name. It's nice to meet you, sir, and I'm really looking forward to this Western show we're going to have, and uh, I guess you'll be participating. Yeah, um, I'll be changing into my outfit in a little while. I do the Long Ranger. The, well, the Long Ranger is uh, one of the American heroes, along with John Wayne, and I think that's going to be a real good influence on the young people here. It's well, we hope it is. Give them a real good role model to look up to. We hope it is. We hope it works out good for them. We've had a lot of positive response from the children that we meet doing this. It's been great talking with you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Your name, sir? T. Shore from Greensboro, North Carolina. Well, it's really been great talking with you, and it's good to see you. I come down here every time I have one of these Westerns. I enjoy them very much. I appreciate all you people. Yeah, it's good to meet new faces, new people all the time. Good, good friendship, good fellowship. Well, it really, that's what makes is people like you. I mean, uh, they're just as part of the team as the people on stage. There you go. We've been doing this a long time, and we practice safety rules. Well, that's a full glass blank. What we'll do to a soda pop. if you see a gun. They are very dangerous unless you practice all the safety rules and know what you're doing. Imagine a bullet does a heck of a lot more damage. And you don't want to look in the mirror one day. Yeah, John Eric Hexham in 82 was a TV star. He was killed. He was playing with a gun. He put a cotton wadded blank. They don't use cotton wadding anymore. Put it to his temple, 44 Magnum. Came out the other side, the size of a baseball. You know, these foreigners come over here and get their citizenship. And uh, they start these gangs. And, uh, Especially the Chinese, they got some rough ones because they do this karate, do this karate stuff, and and it looks important to these people, and they and they get into the games with them because they like that karate look, and uh, they feel like you know if they can learn that, they're you know they're they'll be the greatest. So uh, that entices them to join the karate stuff. And they come in and start these little groups. That's not really good. And I find that has a big impression on the younger people, too. Oh, yeah, that's what the younger people like at karate stuff. I know we got gangs here, but still, uh, that type of culture, it does have a lot of influence on younger people. Yeah, they like at karate stuff. That's what draws them in. And uh, just like I'm saying, I ran into some of it, and I ended up in jail on account. Mm -hmm. Inspector Williams, how about yourself? Okay. Okay, good deal. 
How's the case coming? Wait, well, it's coming along. Uh, All right. Uh, I mean, what I'm saying, have you and uh, your wife to be? Uh, I heard y'all went out to the restaurant the other day. Mm, yes, sir. That's correct. Yeah. Well, That's right. What I'm saying, what type of clothes was she wearing? Does it really matter what type of clothes? It's very necessary that I have information on your girlfriend. It's very necessary that I have the information on your girlfriend. I mean, what I'm saying is that if these people we're out of focus in their description. All right, outstanding job. I said, if anybody can help me, it is you, sir. That, sir, is why you're here today. Are you sure that I can help? You are the man, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I'll do what I can. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Look, uh, when can we get together? I'm on your schedule, sir. You let, please call me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Uh, you know, Mr. Mattis, what I need to help me solve this case is, you know, your your wife. Hmm. You know, when you married her, uh, could you tell me the difference in her personality? Sweetest thing ever, man. I tell you what, uh, from from our dating time to after we got married, uh, of course, uh, business picked up for me. I was away from home a little bit more often, and she was spending more money. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> so I had to work longer hours and be away a little bit more. But uh, other than that, when I'd come home, she was here for me, and, and I was here for her. You know, it, uh, like I said, I to, she started spending more money. I was making more money, had to make more money, and I uh, was gone more often. So we didn't see as much of each other as I would have liked to. Right. Oh. What I want to know is, in other words, uh, the relationship up until her death was as good as it was when we first got married. Yes, it was. Just wasn't as, as much time together. Well, business, yeah, right. you know, it's business. And, right. Well, that, that's all I need to know for now. Thank you very much, Mr. Meadows. Yes, sir, Inspector. Mr. Mattis. Yes, sir. You know, this reminds me of a cabin where I met my wife. You know, you got a nice little place here. Yes, sir. Yeah, we had it built about 10 years ago. Well, you know, just like I served in the military for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, well, uh, I met this woman in my dreams. I thought it was a little late for marriage and whatever. And, we really had a good relationship, some of the happiest years of my life, and then she got sick with a terminal illness, and then she mm. died. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, well, I've met this young woman now, because she's a real shy and bashful person. Mm -hmm. Shy and bashful. But she likes to live in the make-believe world. She likes to pretend she's a stripper. Mm. And I'll be right every night.
Mr. Meadows, Mr. Meadows, Rick Williams. I heard you on the segment today. What about? Yeah, uh, <laughs> you've had more than enough time on this case, and uh, I want my wife's killer caught. And so far, you haven't come up with nothing. Now, are you sure? I mean, are you sure you want your wife's killer caught? Did you just bring me in to fail? If that's true, Inspector Williams. You wouldn't be able to prove anything. So far, you haven't been able to prove nothing. Inspector Williams, <laughs> you seem to be making me out to be the primary suspect here. Well, I'm just uh, following the leads. That's, that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I hired you to clear my name. You know, I, I'm getting to believe that you hired me to fail. I think you just want to look good in a friend's wife to be. Uh, you want to clear yourself in front of her. Uh, I... Papers, okay, on those other two cases? All right, outstanding job. I said, if anybody can help me, it is you, sir. That, sir, is why you're here today. Are you sure that I can help? You are the man, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I'll do what I can. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Look, uh, when can we get together? I'm on your schedule, sir. You let, please call me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Uh, you know, Mr. Mattis, what I need to help me solve this case is, you know, your, your wife. You know, when you married her, uh, could you tell me the difference in her personality? Sweetest thing ever, man. I tell you what, uh, from from our dating time to after we got married, uh, of course, uh, business picked up for me. I was away from home a little bit more often, and she was spending more money. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> so I had to work longer hours and be away a little bit more. But... Uh, other than that, when I'd come home, she was here for me, and, and I was here for her. You know, and, uh, like I said, I to, she started spending more money. I was making more money, had to make more money, and I uh, was gone more often. So we didn't see as much of each other as I would have liked to. Right. Uh, what I want to know is, in other words, uh, the relationship up until her death was as good as it was when we first got married. Yes, it was. Just wasn't as, as much time together. Well, business, yeah, right. you know, it's business. And, right. Well, that, that's all I need to know for now. Thank you very much, Mr. Meadows. Yes, sir, Inspector. Mr. Mattis. Yes, sir. You know, this reminds me of a cabin where I met my wife. You know, you got a nice little place here. Yes, sir. Yeah, we had it built about 10 years ago. Well, you know, just like I served in the military for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, well, uh, I met this woman in my dreams. I thought it was a little late for marriage and whatever. And, we really had a good relationship, some of the happiest years of my life, and then she got sick with a terminal illness, and then she mm. died. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, well, I've met this young woman now, because she's a real shy and bashful person. Mm -hmm. Shy and bashful. But she likes to live in the make-believe world. She likes to pretend she's a stripper. <laughs> Get in there. Looking for trouble, man.
I've been cleared of that airport shoot. I'll be taking a flight to North Carolina tomorrow. I realize um, you like uh, your little sexual fantasies. But uh, while I'm gone, uh, you need to be uh, more precautious. You need to stay away from that window. Mr. Williams, please to meet you, sir. Please have a seat. Well, yes, I got uh, your letter. Uh, yes, sir. What can I help you with? Whew. Well, I am soon to be remarried, okay? My first wife died. There is now suspicion, of all things, of me having murdered her. All right? That's not, it's not the case. It didn't happen. All right? My fiancé is aware of this suspicion now. I'm... I've called you, sir, to help clear my name. I've read about your works here in the papers, okay, on those other two cases. All right, outstanding job. I said, if anybody can help me, it is you, sir. That, sir, is why you're here today. Are you sure that I can help? You are the man, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I'll do what I can. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Look, uh, when can we get together? I'm on your schedule, sir. You let, please call me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Uh, you know, Mr. Mattis, what I need to help me solve this case is, you know, your your wife. Hmm. You know, when you married her, uh, could you tell me the difference in her personality? Sweetest thing ever, man. I tell you what, uh, from from our dating time to after we got married, uh, of course, uh, business picked up for me. I was away from home a little bit more often, and she was spending more money. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> so I had to work longer. Out. If I didn't know any better, I think you're trying to make her out to be a suspect. Mr. Meadows, uh, your wife was the prime suspect. And you tried to cover it up. You knew that she was a patient at the Blacks in Middle Hospital. Maybe not when her, you married, but you knew it since. And you tried to cover it up to save the publication of your book. Your writer murder mystery, and you're afraid that it would hurt you with your publisher. What it is, um, when uh, they found Lamar Craven's body in the river, the boaters found it. And it was analyzed and it was cut up by a knife. Then Jack Barlow's body showed up, cut up by a knife the same way. I did some investigating on your wife and all three of them were patients in the Lexi Mental Hospital at the same time. They got out. So I feel it had to be some link. Okay, this talk at cafe, I found that Jack Lannon had been going with your wife. Jack Lannon is responsible for the death of your wife. So what it is, they were going together and they had a conflict and she tried that knife trick on him and he took the knife away from her and choked her in the process. It didn't work on Jack, because Jack taught self-defense. And right now, Jack's in custody right now, and he has came up with a knife. I still don't find that to clear it. And uh, the knife has been analyzed, and they found the blood stains of Lamar Craven and John Barlow on it. So that clears you, Mr. Meadows, but what it is, uh, you want to get your book published to the point that you're just playing with the death penalty. 
I mean, what I'm saying is, law enforcement was getting ready to put the cuffs on. Because even though you could remember the detail of your wife, the way she was dressed, you couldn't remember uh, the descriptions of other people all that good. But uh, what it is, when it was brought up, that was your wife's favorite dress. And, well, that uh, took a lot of, uh, it helped you. Today. Oh, good. Fine, Inspector Williams. How about yourself? Okay. Okay, good deal. How's the case coming? Well, uh, it's coming along. Uh, All right. Uh, I mean, what I'm saying, have you and uh, your wife to be? Uh, I heard y'all went out to the restaurant the other day. Mm, yes, sir. That's correct. Yeah. Well, That's right. What I'm saying, what type of clothes was she wearing? Does it really matter what type of clothes she was wearing? Well, you know what puzzles me is yes, that, yeah. uh, so you remember everything in detail about your wife, the way your wife was dressed, and uh, your uh, fiance, your uh, wife to be, uh, you can't uh, remember that much. You know, it's sketchy. I mean, you know, uh, some day, sometimes you remember certain parts of her clothing, and uh, I don't know, I'm just really confused about this. I don't see what the problem there is. I mean, you seem to be uh, making me out to be the primary suspect here, Inspector. Well, maybe it was just that day. You know, just that day, you know, the last time, a certain type of clothes she was wearing. Or, mm. Yeah, maybe that's what it was. <laughs> okay. uh, maybe that's what it was. Okay. The voters found the body of the grip. Now, I've been looking for Jack Land and my knowledge is still alive, but I haven't been able to find it. Now, uh, these remains turn out to be his body. It's going to complicate things because uh, I have information that Jack was going with his uh, mother's wife. And if it turns out to be his remains, this case is going to be complicated. He's an escaped mental patient from the state of New York. He's been tried and convicted for two murders. And who knows, he may have been involved in a dozen of them. Doctor, uh, what you're telling me is that the bone structure in the teeth matches the identity of Lamar Craven, not Jake Lennon. Thank you very much, Doctor. So, Spectre, what are the chances are of catching my wife's killer? There's a chance. Glad there's a chance. Well, what I'm saying is, yeah. if the killer's in town, mm -hmm. I just feel that through questioning, he's going to give himself away, but uh, if he's out of town, I don't know. Just, I don't know. Any. Any major suspects right now? Well, it, it's just like uh, there's a number of people who could be a suspect, but it's too many of them with the same, uh, same stories, you know. It's just going to take more work on my part. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just want to come out and, uh, you know, see if there's anything new on your part. I'm, I'm here. Yeah, you know where to find me. Okay. All right. Thanks, sir. What do you got to say for today? Well, you know, today is a beautiful day down here at uh, Charlie's Barn, and uh, we're going to have another Milo Hole Western film show, and gunfights, and singing, and we uh, good food to eat. 
and uh, it's really got a little bit of a breeze out here today. We're going to have a great time. Well, it's been good talking with you, James, and I'm really looking forward to the show. I am too, and it's always a pleasure to see you, Ron, and have a good day. I don't know much to say. I'm just a dumb old country boy. One of uh, Rooster's friends here in Milo Holtz. Well, it's good. Calvin Johnson. Calvin Johnson. And I want to interview the, uh, the man over the Black Rose Pistol Earl. So, you know, he's, uh, you know, putting on these Western shows. And, uh, well, uh, you know, it's a lot of people are saying that uh, the Western shows are violent. They're bad for younger generation. Yet, uh, I feel that's part of our American heritage. And uh, I feel that the story needs to be told. What do you think? Well, violence is a man has the right to defend his country and to defend his family. And if he doesn't stand up for what he believes in, he's going to fall for anything, like a famous country singer said. you got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. But, uh, you got to defend your country, your family, your home. We have the right to bear arms. We have the right to be responsible with them, too. But there's always going to be a handful out of a population of this size of the country where there's going to be some nut cases and some bad apples. And all you got to do is take out the pocket knife, cut out the worm, and go on. <laughs> you want to get your book published to the point that you're just playing with the death penalty. I mean, what I'm saying is, law enforcement was getting ready to put the cuffs on. Because even though you could remember the detail of your wife, the way she was dressed, you couldn't remember uh, the descriptions of other people all that good. But uh, what it is, when it was brought up, that was your wife's favorite dress. And, well, that uh, took a lot of, uh, it helped you. And when she went to meet Jack Lanning, she switched from the high heels to the women's sneakers. They got some nice women's sneakers that go with the dress. Hey, nice place out here. Come on, have a seat here, Inspector Williams. Yes, sir. Now, right over there, right there's a secret fishing hole right over there. Now, come back here on Friday, we'll catch some. All right. Well, yes. Let's go fishing.
we all have a schedule to maintain. If the people supporting us pull out, we all go hungry. I feel that we've got to the bottom of this case. The man that tried to knife me, uh, his fingerprints were on the knife. And uh, three months ago when your business partner was killed, well, uh, even though that this man wiped the knife of the blood, it matches up to the blood of your business partner. I feel we got to the bottom of this case. I failed it. We've got closure. Sure, my heart bleeds for all those people that have passed on. But in a business, you don't quit when things don't go the way you want them to. Look, I got a flight to catch. Look, I wish you the very best. Jack, uh, I feel that you're responsible for the death of Mrs. Charles Meadows. I want you to go back with him and tell what happened. Okay, Jack, we'll do it your way. We'll settle it in the ring. trying to make her out to be a suspect. Mr. Meadows, uh, your wife was the prime suspect. And you tried to cover it up. You knew that she was a patient at the Blacks in Middle Hospital. Maybe not when her, you married, but you knew it since. And you tried to cover it up to save the publication of your book. You're a writer murder mystery and you're afraid that it would hurt you with your publisher. What it is, um, when uh, they found Lamar Craven's body in the river, the boaters found it. 
and it was analyzed and it was cut up by a knife. Then Jack Barlow's body showed up, cut up by a knife the same way. I did some investigating on your wife, and all three of them were patients in the Lexi Mental Hospital at the same time. They got out. So I feel it had to be some link. Okay, this talk at cafe, I found that Jack Lannan had been going with your wife. Jack Lannan 